When using the web as an educational resource, both teachers and students should be cautious about where information is obtained. Virtually anyone can publish to the web, so it can be easy to unknowingly acquire inaccurate or misguiding information. Rather than crossing your fingers and hoping you're using a valid resource, you can take active steps to discriminate between good and bad educational web resources. Although researchers may have different evaluation criteria, in general, the things to look out for are authority, affiliation, motivation, content, design, and timeliness. It's very important to teach students how to examine these points as well. The first thing you should consider is the authority of the person or persons responsible for the website. After all, if you were researching climates, wouldn't you feel better about referring to a site created by a meteorologist than one maintained by a hobbyist? Basically, you'll want to ask yourself, does the author have the credentials to provide this information? Sites usually include a section about the authors, typically toward the bottom of the home page. You can use that information to analyze the author's credibility. The author's occupation, education, and other credentials should be included. Contact information, usually in the form of an email address, should be there as well. You'll also want to find out what professional organization, educational institution, school district, government office, or other company the website is associated with. In other words, you should ascertain its affiliation. Doing so should help you determine the site's credibility. You can usually rely on well-known sources of information, such as news sites, nonprofit organizations, and school districts. A good way to determine a web resource's affiliation is to examine the site's domain extension and URL. A .gov extension, for example, reveals that the site is maintained by the United States government. You can look at CNN's URL and see what each label represents. We've learned what the .gov extension represents. See if you can identify what each of these extensions stand for by matching them to their proper description. You can check your answers using the button at the bottom of the exercise. Then, when you're ready, you can click Next to learn more about evaluating web resources. Another evaluation criterion you may want to use is the website's motivation or why the owner is providing this information. The purpose of the site should be clearly stated, but if it isn't, you'll need to determine it for yourself. Next, you should closely examine the site's content, considering things such as depth of coverage, accuracy, and age appropriateness. While doing this, it's also important to keep in mind the learning objectives you have for the class, since the usefulness of the content largely depends on what was needed in the first place. One thing to check for when evaluating content is the site's links. You should click the links to make sure that they aren't broken, that they lead to appropriate material, and that they don't only lead to pages within the site itself. There are many other ways of evaluating content, and they are listed here as questions to ask yourself. The design of the site is another important facet to examine. Specifically, does the design add to or detract from the delivery of information in the site? Is the content laid out in a logical manner so that you can easily locate what you need without wandering around and wasting time? Without a doubt, instructional design significantly influences a site's effectiveness. One last aspect to consider is timeliness, or how up-to-date the information provided in the site is. See if you can determine how recent the facts and figures are. You probably don't want to use information from an online report written 10 years ago, particularly when statistics are given. Good resources will state when the site was last revised.
Do you feel you have a better idea of how to determine whether an online resource is valuable or not? Show how much you've learned by completing this review exercise. Which questions are helpful in evaluating a web resource? Mark and check your answers, and then click Next to move on. To make the process of evaluating educational websites easier, you can use web evaluation rubrics, which are simply assessment tools. There are many rubrics you can find on the web, or you can design some for yourself once you've become more experienced at evaluating sites. To encourage students to get in the habit of evaluating sites they want to use for research, website evaluation rubrics have been designed especially for them. These rubrics are simplified, particularly for younger students. Here we've included a rubric that might be useful for an elementary age student. You can do a lot to ensure that the resources you use from the web are reliable, applicable, and appropriate for your purposes. All that is involved is time, a critical eye, and a list of questions to ask yourself. Remember, it's crucial that students adopt these critical thinking skills, too, as they will be using the web as a resource just as much as you will. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.